What up, y'all? It's your boy Brandon with Dump That Dumpster Rentals. Uh, I'm here today just chilling in my truck on this beautiful day. Thought I would sh sh uh, shoot a quick video. Um, I've been looking at a lot of the comments and messages. Basically, people asking me uh, different questions. And I think I'm going to start just doing some quicker videos. Ones that are... Um, uh, more geared to answering some questions as well as uh, ones that kind of show some action out in the trenches when we are uh, moving trailers and having different jobs like that but I get a lot of different questions so I kind of been gathering the questions put them in a spot and I think I'm gonna just kind of try to do a video on those questions um, to kind of show any experience or information or just an opinion uh, about these questions I'm not a professional in any way um, we just started in November 2020, but uh, I have been running um, different businesses prior to that. I've been in real estate since 2016, and I've started uh, a few other businesses in between. So I kind of have, you know, the concept about business in general. So I can kind of mix the two and kind of just give you my opinion or our experience so far. Now the question that uh, I was asked. Um, a while back that I'm gonna that I want to talk about today was should I get into the dumpster rental business with partners and um, there's no right or wrong answer to that but I think there are a few guidelines that you should follow when starting any business with partners and the first thing is do you need a partner you don't need a partner to get started, but these are a few things that I will look for when trying to decide if it's worth getting a partner. The first thing is, does that person bring a unique resource or benefit to the business? Now, when I say that, um, I guess just like real estate, when you're getting a partner, think about it like this. If you can get your entire, uh, if you can buy a property and you can do everything yourself, you can pay for it, you had the time to watch uh, the contractors, you had the time to do the legal, you had, you had the time to run the numbers. To, if you can do it all, you wouldn't give a partner half of the profits, right? And that's the same, the same thing when you think of this dumpster rental business. For example, uh, for my business, I have the, I have, the, I have favorable credit, and I have uh, capital. But one thing that I don't have is time. I don't have the time to uh, pick up trailers, drop off trailers, just driving around. I don't have that time because I have another job, and that's where that's where that partner comes in because i could not have started this business without someone who had the time and more than likely the person that gives you the time may not have the resources to leverage uh financially to get the business started so when you think about those two those, those two things go hand in hand because we need each other so that's a unique benefit that we both bring to the table to kind of get the ball rolling because without it, I wouldn't be in this business making money. So when you look at it like that, it's like, is it a necessity? Or is it just me wanting to be lazy? I don't want to say everybody's being lazy, but is it is it me figuring out excuses on why I want someone else to be in this relationship? Because a, a business relationship is just like a marriage. And if you know, if you've been married, if you've been in a long-term relationship, putting two people together can be a strain. And you don't want to mix that when it comes to money. And sometimes this is this is people's livelihood. So you want to be very conscious about who you get in a bed with when it comes to starting a business. So that's the, that's the number one thing you want to think of before you think about anything else. What does this person bring to the table that's so important 
that it can make or break uh, me being able to start a business. So let's talk about the pros and cons that goes with um, deciding if you're going to go solo or if you're going to go with adding business partners. So the most common question is finances, right? The obvious is if you start a loan, you're 100% <laughs> in charge of putting all of the money towards your business. And then you're going to be 100% when it comes to losing everything. If you was to lose the business, everything you all everything you put in it, your hard earned time, your work, your money, everything, you lose it. So that's the obvious. Now, it's a bit more complex once you start to add business partners. Because now you have to talk about a split. You know, how are you going to split the profits? Uh, the most common way is 50-50. Um, but sometimes one person is the is the person that came up with the idea. Uh, they may have the funds to put up. They may have the equipment. And they may just need a driver. Or they may just need someone to answer the phones. You know, there's different ways you can set it up. But it's going to be some type of split if you're partners. Now, if you're just hiring someone, that's something different. But if you're actually business partners, there's going to be a split and you're going to split, split the profits uh, some way, shape, or form. Um, and then the other thing is, if you were to lose everything, you would split your loss. Um, not saying that you would split the financial side of it because one person may be doing all of the footwork and they'll just lose the time and effort and energy that they put in and then the other person will lose how much money they put in. So, uh, like I said, that can be more complex. You have to work that out uh, with your partner um, to figure out what's the best way to do it because every situation is unique. Um, so another thing is your experiences. If you, if you start this alone, you are, you're going to have to be experienced in quite a few things. You don't have to know everything just to start a dumpster rental business. That's not what I'm saying. But you will eventually have to learn these things if you want to scale your business. Because if it's just a side hustle and if you're just trying to make some cash, yeah, you can you can post some Facebook ads, get some phone calls, drop off your dumpster and pick it up. You can make some money. But if you're trying to scale this thing, I mean, turn this uh, enterprise of of a fleet of different uh, trucks and trailers and machinery, whatever it may be, you're gonna have to wear a lot of hats. Um, even if you split it, even if you have partners, you're gonna have to wear a lot of hats. But it's uh, it's a lot easier if you do have partners. Now, I wrote down a few things that, just at the top, off the top of my head, that you kinda have to um, be prepared to do, like right out the gate. Um, organizing organizing your system and your and your, your truck and trailer routes you have to be able to you know understand the best way to get your trailers out to pick them up to dump them and to keep it on a schedule if you have one trailer it's not that difficult because you only have one to basically keep an eye on all you can do is pick it up dump it drop it but once you start to add two three four trailers now you need a system to make sure that you can get these trailers out you have to understand that hey I, I won't have a trailer until this day I can't I can't book this trailer until I get this one back if I do seven days this you know so it becomes to you have to use logic and a little bit of math and start knowing numbers and different things like that and that can grow once you start to uh, increase your fleet of trailers Another thing is answering phones. Now, it seems straightforward um, when you think of answering phones, but once you get into this business, once you start hitting a certain type of clientele that asks, I mean, it asks many questions because you have a lot of people who've never ran out of the dumpster and you have people who've been scammed before. So they ask a lot of questions and sometimes these are five, 10 minute phone calls. Wow you're dumping a trailer while you're unloading a trailer or you're doing something else. So it's not always that you're just sitting around and you just have time to sit back, put your feet up and have a conversation on the phone. So all of these things that I'm listing can kind of start happening on top of each other. So you gotta be mindful of that. Um, answering phone calls is one, text messages. 
which is it's the same thing but you still have to be prepared to respond uh, very quickly because when people are looking for dumpsters if it's on Facebook if it's on uh, Google business if it's a phone call people are calling multiple uh, dumpster rental spots so it's never hey let me call one person and see what they can offer they'll call you and as soon as you don't answer as soon as you don't reply to a message they're calling the next one the next so when I get a phone call I stop everything that I'm doing I've been in the shower and had a phone call and I turn the water off and hey how you doing this is Brandon with Dump the Dumpster Rentals I can help you <laughs> you know what I mean so that's just a part that's another hat you're gonna have to wear and you have to do it on a timely manner or you're gonna start losing business and start when you lose business you lose money uh, another one is the things that's gonna happen to your trailer when you think about these big heavy trailers even if you do utility you have to be able to figure things out on the go um, it's been many instances where things just didn't work and you have to figure it out for example the leg that holds the trailer up and there's a as a metal pin that goes through it and I was on a time crunch I had promised this trailer and traffic was bad and then when I got to the trailer the trailer was overloaded on one side so I had to get in to fix it to balance it out and then when I was ready to lift the leg up the leg wouldn't come up and then the pin was stuck so I had to figure out on the go how do I get out of the situation you know so I had to put a piece of wood I had to put two pieces of wood behind the two rear tires and reverse so that the truck can actually lift up and then the leg will come off the ground and we're able to pull the pin up. So, so it's just different things that you have to do and you have to have that mindset and uh, the ability to multitask and to still get things done while your phone is ringing, while you're getting text messages, while you're dumping the trailer, while you're running into issues on the go. Um, another thing that you have to be able to do, you have to be able to keep up with your money, um, being your own accountant. Uh, it's very important to keep track of how much money is going out and how much money is coming in, especially if you want your business to grow. If you don't understand that, then you're starting off on the wrong foot. You're going to also need this when it comes to uh, tax season. If you, don't, if you don't have your income, your expenses, you know, your CPA won't be able to, to give you uh, the, best, uh, the best service if you don't have those things available. So having the right uh, software to, to keep up with these different things is very critical. And that's something you kind of have to do on a, on a go. As soon as I get a phone call, I get a phone call and the first thing I do is I collect information. Now, depending on where I'm at, I may do it on my phone and my notes. I may tell a customer to text me. I may be on my laptop. I may be by my whiteboard where I can just write it down. As soon as I get the information, I send it to my driver and I ask for ETA. While he's giving me the ETA, I'm writing up the invoice and then I submit it, I send it to the customer. The customer gets the invoice, they're paying the invoice, I get the ETA, I pass that to the customer and then sometimes the customer doesn't pay the invoice right away. So our policy is that my driver is not gonna drop the trailer until we have payment. So now we have the driver waiting for the payment, the customer's not responding, and you have to figure out, okay, do I take my trailer back? Do I have my driver wait? Then it's gonna be a little late for my next drop off. Is it a, you know, if it's a customer that you trust or you've been dealing with, it's not that big of a deal. You leave it, they'll pay it later. But all of those things come into play. And if you're doing it alone and you have multiple trailers, the stress can build up very quickly. So, um, but it's all doable. Everything that I'm saying right now is doable, 100% doable, but you kind of, <laughs> you have to be prepared and you have to be mentally built for this. Uh, it's basically what I'm saying. Um, and then social media. You want to take a lot of pictures, you want to post on your social media. That's, that's, a, that's a job in itself. Uh, it doesn't seem like is that big of a deal but you have to remember to take pictures you have to remember to post um you have to reply to dms on your social media 
you have to you know have a little strategy with it you want to have you know a nice look because because you'll be surprised how many construction companies that are on social media in your city will start to follow you okay i got a phone call be right back <laughs> so yeah that was a customer just calling and <laughs> this is a good example right here the phone didn't answer and i tried to answer it i called him back and he asked me what was my what was my company's name because he had called five companies already. He called five already. So <laughs> obviously the first the whoever he called prior to me didn't didn't answer the phone, didn't get the job done. Or maybe he was just shopping. But uh he just booked with me. So yeah, so that's a good example on why you have to answer the phone. I try to answer no later than the second ring because people are impatient. They they want to get these they want to get these dumpsters right away, so that's just a good example right there um, on why it's so important to just be around. But what I was saying was on my social media, we have a bunch of contractors and roofers that follow my social media page. Every time I post it, they like it and they just ask random questions. Um, even if they're not booking now just know that they're thinking about you and every time you post that that post goes across their feed and they just it kind of sits on their memory or oh, as soon as i need this these guys do this oh okay they're, they're dumping tires i didn't know they did that so that's cool so it's just you know we don't get we don't get much of our business from social media but there are key connections on social media um that we take advantage of we're, we're actually getting po reposted by the mayor, the mayor in our city, because we commented and we volunteered our dumpster for some cleanup jobs. Um, and actually, Saturday, we're, we're uh, volunteering for this. Um, it's a nonprofit that works directly with the city and they plant trees throughout the city. So we're going to be we're going to volunteer two trucks. They don't need. What's this? OK, just a message. Um, they don't need our dumpster yet but they do need two trucks to deliver uh, some trees. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna take a bunch of pictures <laughs> and we're gonna continue to get in front of the city so that they, they know that this is a company who is willing to volunteer to help out in the community. So it's not always about money. It's, 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 I mean, it leads back to money and contracts, but it's just a strategy uh, and every little piece works, you know what I mean? So uh, I kind of ran on a tangent, but uh, and then the last thing that I just wrote down is basically marketing. Marketing, marketing, marketing. Uh, it's so much. That's a video in itself. But on your downtime, that's something that you really have to put some good quality energy into. Because if you don't, if people don't know that you exist, if you're not getting out, you're not going to get the jobs. Um, this is where you look at hustle harder. A smarter you want to hustle smarter because you can you can put all the footwork in but if you're not doing the smart things and the, the things that are necessities it's gonna be a struggle and that's something you're gonna to have to do so all that to say that if you do it alone you're gonna to have to either have the money to pay people to do these things or you're gonna to have to get really good at these things on the go um, so when you look at partners Again, like at the very beginning of the video, I said you want to find unique partners that give you great benefit um, towards your business because you don't want to have two drivers. You don't want to have two drivers in the business and both of you guys are only good at driving trailers. Uh, you know what I mean? Like there's so much more that needs to be done and you need people who are experiencing these different things. So uh, if you have a if you have a team, you want to have people that are very different, but still have the same mindset. I'm the techie person. When it comes to I'm doing YouTube videos, nobody else on my team would want to get in front of a camera. Uh, I'm on social media. I've grown social media accounts from zero to twenty thousand in six seven weeks. Like I've done it. I'm in IT. I'm good with computers. I'm good with Photoshop. I'm, I'm good with these things. Uh, my brother is great with with customer service delivering trailers like he will he will drop off a trailer he doesn't have problems with talking to people in person but he doesn't like to talk to people over the phone you know so his strengths 
maybe my weakness, my weakness may be his strengths. And then my other partner is he's a, he's a he's a big numbers guy. He he's a he's someone who's helping me helping me scale. He's thinking on a broader picture. So we we have the same mindset, we have the same energy, but we're very different. And that's why our partnership works. But again, I would not have partnered with them if they didn't bring these key elements that I needed to run this business. So that's just, um, that's my two cents on when you're deciding if you want to start with a partner or if you want to do it alone. Even if you want to test the water out by doing it alone first. Because again, you're getting in a relationship, a business relationship with someone. And sometimes you get in it and it's hard to get out. So make sure you, you, you start a business with someone you trust, someone who's trustworthy, someone have, who has these skills that can really uh, help your business become successful because if you just pick anybody don't just pick your cousin just because he's your cousin you know what I mean so yeah that's just my two cents and this is a video we just want to talk about sounds like a jet but it was a question that I've had multiple times come across uh, come across in my messages so I just kind of wanted to talk about it uh, this is where I'm at so far with it as my opinion Again, I'm not a professional or anything. Just started this, but it's just my two cents. But y'all give me a follow, a like, a subscribe. Give it something. But I appreciate it. It's Brandon with Dump That. Catch y'all later. Peace.